What's up guys? Justin here with DCGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out a brand new Blender add-on for creating realistic clouds inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Cloudscapes is a brand new add-on from the guys over at B Production. We've talked about B Production before. We've talked about forestation and vegetation in the past, um, as well as their new real wood textures add-on. Um, this is a brand new add-on that they've just released. And as you can see on the front page of the Blender market, it's already shot up in popularity. So I did want to make sure that I talked about it a little bit on this channel. Basically what Cloudscapes is, is it's a tool for creating 3D volumetric clouds using VD beats. What this means is instead of bringing in like cloud images or something like that, what this does instead is this actually brings in a volume and it actually calculates your rendering based on those volumes. So it is compatible with both Cycles and Eevee as well as the Asset Browser. So if you watch this video in the next couple days, um, they are running a launch offer. Uh, you can get 25% off with the code Cloudscapes25. And so they've got a pretty large collection of different kinds of clouds in here. And they're gonna be separated in the Asset Browser. We'll take a look at these in a minute, but notice how you can use these to create all of these different cloud types in true 3D. Let's go ahead and jump over into Blender and talk about the way that this works. Uh, one thing to note, there is a tutorial video from B Production under the documentation tab over here. So if you are looking for a little bit more instruction on how exactly this whole thing should work, this could be a good place for you to start. But for now, let's jump over into Blender and I'm going to show you how to set this up. So when you first open this up, this is going to include a RAR file, um, which you can unzip in order to get to the actual cloud assets, as well as a scatter pack, which is going to work both with scatter as well as their new biome reader, which we'll take a look at in a second. But the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to unzip this file. And so when you unzip this file, you're going to get to a folder that looks something like this. This basically has the blend file in here that has all of the assets as well as the different categories. So whatever this folder is, I renamed it to assets cloudscapes just because that's how I'm uh, organizing my assets. But you basically want this folder that comes out of the unzip file. Then what you want to do is you want to go into your blender preferences under file paths and you want to go down and you want to click on the plus button right here and you want to add that folder. So you can see how I clicked on this uh, assets-cloudscapes folder that I created and I labeled it assets.cloudscapes. So once you do that and you save your preferences, these are now going to show up inside of your asset browser. So for me, if I click the drop down, I can go into cloudscapes right here and I can see all of those different clouds. And note that there are a number of different clouds in here. So you've got some clouds that look like numbers. And so these are all in here by their different types. You can either scroll through and see them all this way, or they're also organized by categories. So like for example, I could click on the smoke trails and we can actually bring the smoke trails in here. Um, I could click on the Cirrus and see all the Cirrus clouds that are in here. They've actually got this set up to work really well with the asset browser, which is really nice. But basically the way these work is you can just take them and you can just drag them into your scene like this. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring this VDB file in um, and it's going to be set up and ready for you to start rendering. And notice how this shows up as a volume inside of Notice how this shows up as a volume inside of solid mode, but it doesn't really fully render out until we jump over into the rendered view. And so note with these, if you wanna like move them around, you can just move them around like regular geometry. You can also rotate them, right? So if I wanted to rotate this on the Z axis, for example, um, I could go ahead and do that. So you can just move these around and you can scale them just like you would any other Blender asset. And so right now, if we were to jump over into rendered mode, this would look just kind of blah. Right, And the reason it would look kind of blah is first off, we're in Eevee, which actually still um, gets us a decent result in here, but we're probably going to want to be in cycles for the final thing. But these clouds are actually 3D volumes that are going to be affected by our environment. So before we really take a look at them in rendered view, let's just set up a little bit of lighting in our scene. Now you can either bring in like an HDRI in the background, or what I've seen so far is everyone just seems to be adding in, at least for the demo, um, the sky texture from directly inside of Blender like this. And so let's go ahead. Let's jump over into rendered mode right here. And remember that you can select the different sky texture colors using the drop down right here. So you can kind of jump between those and see which one you like. 
But again, notice how this is kind of reacting to that sky color in here um, when we make that change. And so let's jump over into cycles and see what this does. And so you can see if I jump over into cycles, this is actually rendering this out as a volume in the 3D space. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a more detailed cloud because some of these by definition are just kind of like, they, they don't have a whole lot of detail to them. So let's bring in one of these big old cumulonimbus clouds and take a look at that. So if I bring that in, so if I bring this in and take a look at it, notice how this is significantly more detailed than that other cloud type. Some cloud types are just more detailed than others. And let's go ahead and let's, let's rotate around. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the shader type in here so we get something with a little more pronounced sunlight just so you can kind of see what this does. But again, if you look at this, notice how this renders out um, as a very detailed cloud and it actually looks really good. Um, I'm actually kind of impressed with the result that we're getting um, with this out of the box cloud. All right, and so one of the cool things about this is you can actually make adjustments to this cloud inside of its shader editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to my shader editor right here and take a look at this. But there's different settings that you can adjust in order to adjust the way that the clouds look. So like for example, I could bring my density down to one or even lower than one, maybe like 0 0.05, just so you can kind of take a look. And so notice how this cloud is less, uh, I don't wanna say less defined, but um, it's just not as dense, right? And so you're getting a different look here with this cloud. So you can actually come in here and make changes to the way these clouds look. And then not only can you adjust that cloud and notice how you can change like the density or the, uh, the brightness of the light in order to adjust the way the cloud's gonna look as well because this is reacting to the actual light of your environment. But you can also come in here and adjust things like the color of your cloud. So if you wanted this to be a little more gray or something like that, and so I can bring that down, you could do some really funky things with this. I mean, obviously we don't get blue clouds here on earth, but um, you could come in here and make those adjustments as well. And those adjustments are actually happening fairly quickly in here. It's just a question of waiting for the rest of this to render. So if I come in here and I adjust this setting, the anisotropy, which I hope I said right, that word kills me when I'm trying to pronounce it. But if I adjust this, notice how the colors on the backside of the cloud are getting darker. So you can get like an interesting contrast in here by making this adjustment. You can see how the dark areas on the backside get a lot darker if I adjust that up or they get lighter if I bring it to the left. So you can either create that like high contrast look or not based on that setting right there. And so these last few are going to affect more like emission of the clouds. And so this is helpful if you wanna create more of like a fire or something like that. Um, so if you make changes to it right now, right? If you make it emissive, it doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense. Um, somebody might disagree with me there, but I don't know why you would want this to emit light at the moment. But if you come down here and you replace the temperature with a density value. And so once you do that, right, you change your intensity or your temperature to density. If you bring this black body intensity up, what's gonna happen at this is this is going to act more like fire. Now, notice how with this right here, um, this is too hot, so it's just like white hot. But if you bring your temperature down to like 100 or something like that, notice how this is going to act more like something that's actually on fire. That's when that emission strength starts making a little bit more sense. So you can use that temperature in order to get the different kinds of fire. You could also come in here and put in like a really low emission strength. So if I put in like a 0 0.001, right, this is going to emit light um, as well. Most of the time, if you're rendering clouds, you're gonna wanna keep this as temperature, but if you do have a situation where you want this to look a little bit more like fire, um, that's a pretty easy change to make. So one thing that's noted in the official tutorial about this is sometimes these clouds can look very, um, they, they, they don't really let light through the way that you would like for them to. They seem a little bit too solid. You can jump over into your render settings under cycles, but if you go down to the light paths function down below and you bump up this volume value, then this is gonna allow more light through and your clouds aren't gonna look quite as solid. Now be aware that if you do bump this up, it is going to be a little bit harder on your computer. Your renders might take longer, but you are going to get that different result. So earlier we talked about this scatter pack that comes along with this tool. This is a tool that basically integrates either with Biome Reader or with Geo Scatter. 
So we talked about Biome Reader earlier this week. So it's basically the free version of GeoScatter. So it's the tool that you can use in order to scatter biomes or scatter packs inside of Blender. You can also scatter these with GeoScatter, which is a much more powerful scattering tool. I'll link to both of them in the notes down below. Um, but basically the way that works. Okay, and so if we want to install that scatter package, what we need to do is just go into edit and you either need to have biome reader or geo scatter enabled, one or the other. Um, and what we wanna do is we wanna go into the enter manager setting right here and we wanna click on the option for install a package. And so when you do that, you wanna go find that scatter pack file that we talked about. I just moved it into my assets folder. You just want to click on it and click on the install package button. And so when you do that, and you can just click on okay when this warning pops up, um, everything should still work if you click on that. So then we're gonna click on okay. And now if we look at our assets right here, right, um, the Cloudscapes assets are going to show up as an option. Okay, so then you just wanna tap the N key and pop out the Biome Reader window. So then just use the emitter box up here to select this plane and set it as our emitter. You can click on this button to open the biomes. That's gonna open up your biome section and specifically we wanna focus on Cloudscapes right here. And you can select any of these different kinds of cloudscapes um, that have different looks. And you can kind of preview them inside of this space. I'm gonna pick something that's relatively light I will say rendering out volumes like this is obviously a little bit heavier, but if I go ahead and render this out like this, what this is gonna do is it's gonna bring those clouds in. Now, I got a little confused here for a second because um, I don't really see any of the clouds in here. And so what happens is the density on these comes in really, really low and it's being driven by your size right here. So what you can do is you can tab into edit mode and you can scale this up. Well, notice how when you scale this up, um, the sizes start making more sense because this is kind of using those real world sizes. So you can scale this up in edit mode in order to get your clouds to start showing up. But notice what that's doing is that's coming in here and it's actually like scattering clouds or cloud volumes inside of your 3D space. Now, if you start getting this view clipping in here, you can either go up into your view right here and change your clipping. So I'm gonna change this to like 10,000, um, but you could also set up a camera and then within your camera, right? So if I hit zero on my camera right here, you can actually go into your camera settings and adjust that clipping as well. So if your camera does clip out any of the clouds or anything like that, you can go into that and adjust your clipping right here. But then once you've kind of scaled this up to the point where it's actually like bringing in all the clouds that you want, you can actually tab out of edit mode and scale this whole thing up or down like this. So you can use this in order to get your clouds to show up, then bring them in for a much smaller scene if you decide that you wanna do that. But notice how this basically came in here and it scatters your different cloud types in the 3D space. Well then, you can jump over into rendered mode and actually render these out. And so one thing that you may wanna do when you do that is first off, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my sky. So I'm gonna set up my sky texture right here. I'll bring my strength down to 0.5. We'll uh, set our render engine to cycles and GPU. But then I'm gonna jump over into rendered view and notice how these clouds are rendered out in this space. So all the volumes are rendering out. Now you may not wanna see this plane in here. So what you can do is you can go into the object properties and um, go down into visibility and just uncheck all of the boxes under ray visibility. That's going to hide that plane so it doesn't block anything in your scene so you can actually see the clouds. So you can use these as kind of a backdrop, view them from below, other things like that. So um, using the scattering capabilities of Biome Reader, you can use this in order to create a sky um, that's kind of scattered automatically inside of Blender. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about Cloudscapes. I will link to it on this page if you want to learn more. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.